No, I, if everybody, this is a little awkward. I have a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> that, it's not connecting to that thing, so I'm gonna have everyone gather around this table up here. Is that okay? What? You can hold it up if you want. Okay, I mean, and if anybody misses the PowerPoint, like, I'll get your email at the end of the show. And <laughs> Maybe a Google Doc or something? No, that's, I can, here, we can do it here. We'll figure it out. Here's, here's how it's gonna go. We're gonna do this right. We're gonna do it oh now. I'm so sorry. Dog <laughs> Shut up, Chase. <laughs> Hello? Thank you. I just wanna what? What's up? We're gonna get real close, everybody. Okay. Uh, my name is Tom. I did my report on camels. <laughs> Um, maybe some of you here in the audience tonight who don't believe the camels are wondrous emissaries of God's love. <laughs> I was like you once. I had some misconceptions about camels. No, it's fine. <laughs> I thought camels as the unfortunate, ugly relatives of horses. They were just stupid, ugly desert horses to me. And a horse that runs less fast than other horses is not a horse at all. It's just a future glue stick. <laughs> they have stupid faces. Case in point. <laughs> Spinal tumors? What the fuck? <laughs> but December 21st, 2014, exactly two years after the Mayan apocalypse, <laughs> my world is destroyed and rebuilt on a trip to the Columbus Zoo. <laughs> Where for the first time I saw a camel in real life. <laughs> I've had revelatory drug trips, ecstatic religious experiences, and world bending orgasms, and I can honestly say that seeing a camel for the first time was a blend of all those emotions. <laughs> Pure, unbridled, psycho-spiritual joy. <laughs> Firstly, I never considered how enormous these things are. Horses are big, but dromedary camels are massive. <laughs> Secondly, they move and walk like nothing else that lives on this earth. They have giant, bendy, wobble legs that just sort of <laughs> go lump around with their knees bending backwards, and they always look like they're gonna fall over, except their faces are always nonchalant. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up, sheeple! <laughs> camels are the most ridiculous animals that have ever lived on the face of the planet. God created camels after he created every other animal so they could be the perfect parody of his own work. <laughs> they are intergalactic messengers of love. They can survive the harshest deserts because they survived the void of space to come here to us. <laughs> They are better than you or I will ever be. <laughs> All right, here's some fun facts about camels. There are two types of camels. One's one hump, those are dromedaries. And there are two humps, those are Bactrians. That's important, okay? Both are sacred and majestic. <laughs> They have second eyelids, fuzzy ears, and tons of nose hair, which all work to block out sand and debris. You guys can just click it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. They can drink 30 gallons of water in 13 minutes. Oh, wow. I, oh, I still can't shotgun a beer. <laughs> <laughs> Baby camels can stand and walk 30 minutes after being born. This means that a newborn camel is smarter and more functional than a two-year-old human child, <laughs> and sexier to boot. <laughs> Camels can live up to a week without water, which is twice as long as you 
piss ants would last. <laughs> Each half of their upper lip is prehensile and moves independently of the other, so they can make out with two other hot candles. <laughs> <laughs> they spit. I'm not gonna bullshit you on this, it's nasty. <laughs> it's not just saliva, also, it's also stomach bile, so it's like half puke and half disrespect. <laughs> you can tell, actually, when a camel's about to spit because their cheeks bulge up, so if you ever see a camel holding its breath, it's not. <laughs> uh, and, uh, cave paintings of camels have existed for thousands of years before recorded Western history, so fuck us, right? <laughs> Alright, that's enough foreplay, let's talk about camel sex. <laughs> if you can't see this video, it's Planet Earth episode 4. It's worth watching all the way through. Camels, okay? They scream and spank themselves to attract females. And if you didn't notice it in the video, there's a, here a red circle. Uh, go check this out because right on the camel's backside, where they spank themselves with their tail, he has whipped himself raw <laughs> from over spanking. <laughs> because every one of these Baxter camels are too horny to have hair when they spank themselves. <laughs> But that's nothing compared to the mating habits of dromedary camels. That is a sexual gesture. <laughs> All right, listen. They drink female dromedary camels' urine, okay? They lick the female's vagina, and then they transport the urine into a specialized organ in their mouths that only exists to analyze pee and tell whether she's fertile or not. Um, they also pee on their own tails and fling it around as fast as they can to show dominance. <laughs> Those behaviors make sense. What doesn't make sense is camels also um, have a fleshy sac in their mouths called a doula that's over 30 centimeters long. It looks like an enormous ball sac <laughs> filled with air and they inflate it and they spit all over their own mouths and faces and fling the doula around and spray spit everywhere. Nobody knows why. <laughs> and uh, this is a picture if you can see. That's the doula. That's not a tongue. That's just like a big peacock feather. They're incredible. <laughs> okay. So lastly, it turns out camels aren't slower than horses at all. In fact, they're just as fast. They can run up to 40 kilometers an hour. And camel racing is big in the Middle East. <laughs> especially in Dubai. That's a specialized racing suit for the camel. A, a, like, a champion camel fetches a price tag of up to a million dollars. It's nuts, okay? Um, they receive the best food, best medical care, and specialized low-impact training. And by low-impact, I mean water aerobics. <laughs> they build trenches that the camels swim in to work out in, so they don't get hurt working out, okay? Um, and then during the races, there are coaches that drive along the track and honk horns at the camels and the jockeys, and then scream at the jockeys over a walkie-talkie. Now when I say camel champions, the camels are the champions. The jockeys are totally replaceable. And in fact, slave traders will capture young children and force them to become jockeys for the camels. Uh, so I hope you all learned a lot. Uh, and gained great, great appreciation for them. And uh, do your part to end human trafficking. Thank you so much.